So this weekend we have some massive games coming up in the All-Ireland Hurling Championship. We have two qualifiers in both Tipperary against Cork and Clare going up against Wexford. And of course we also have two provincial finals in both the Munster Senior Hurling Championship final between Limerick and Waterford and also Galway and Kilkenny. I'm very excited for these games, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot on the line here. We're going to learn a lot more about some of these respective counties in terms of where they are at going into what could be, you know, potential All-Ireland semis for some of them and also, you know, a route into the qualifiers and All-Ireland quarterfinals for the others. But as always, what we'll be doing is breaking things down, talking about the big players, the big games, the big match in today's preview and yeah let's get straight into it what's the story everyone it's Aaron here from GA Fan TV I'm back again of course with another video and today we're looking at uh, this weekend's hurling action and uh, if you haven't seen my football preview do go and check it out that would have came out yesterday where we talked about all the big football games coming up including the likes of Donegal, Armagh you know, Dublin against Leash and of course the Connacht final in Galway Mayo as well. But obviously today we're talking about hurling and I mean there's a lot of very interesting matches in the hurling championship now. I mean it's quite incredible to think that at the end of this weekend we'll, ar we'll already know two of our semi-finalists and you know we'll basically be down to the final six in the All-Ireland. Um, which is kind of crazy to think considering the championship only started about two weeks ago you know normally in hurling you have the round robin so it goes on for five six weeks before you even get to your quarterfinals or semi-finals so it goes to show how crazy 2020 is but of course you know we're just grateful to have a championship but look listen we'll start off by talking about tipperary in cork what a massive game this is you know what a huge game between these two counties you know tipperary and cork down the years it is a big rivalry between these two you're talking about two of the most successful uh, counties in uh, hurling in you know in, in in hurling at senior level anyway you know massive games for both of these two uh, both Tipperary and Cork and I'm looking at Tipperary and I'm thinking how can they bounce back from that defeat versus Limerick because they looked very lethargic they looked very out of place they didn't look hungry enough to win that game against Limerick and they just weren't up for the fight will they be up for the fight against Cork I think that's the massive question I think Tipperary are always at their best though when they're being wrote off you know they got beat by Limerick in the Leinster final or sorry in the Munster final last year and you know a lot of people started to write them off think that maybe they ran out of steam going through the round robin winning every game and and maybe they're just not at the same level as the likes of Limericks and Kilkenny and so on but they proved absolutely everyone wrong you know they really steamrolled their way to an All-Ireland you know beat Wexford in the end and of course beat Kilkenny pretty comfortably in the final that year and you know you even think back to 2010 when Tipperary won the All-Ireland they were beaten that year as well I think by Cork if you know I might be wrong by that but someone will let me know down in the comments below but I know Tipperary were beaten that year in the Munster Championship and then they came back to win the All-Ireland so I think for Liam Sheedy look he will know his players inside and out and he will know how to get the best of them and I fully expect them to bounce back here I think it's foolish to write them off I still think they are all Ireland contenders and I still reckon they will be Cork in this game but look listen if they are going to be Cork they need to get more out of their forwards the likes of Shamey Callanan really needs to get more involved in this game you know his only real contribution in the Limerick game was the Jake Morris goal. That was really it. Um, and we need to see a bit more from him. You know, he scored a, a goal, I think, in every game last year in the championship. And a little bit of a poor start this time around, you know, against Limerick. But certainly if you expect him to get more involved, the likes of uh, John McGrath as well. Noel McGrath in midfield, I think, needs to improve a bit more as well. And then they've definitely got a chance. And they will need to tighten up defensively, you know, to deal with Cork's pace. Cork do attack with a lot of pace and you're looking at the likes of Robbie O'Flynn and Seamus Harnady. How will Tipperary be able to deal with that attack? And that's not to even mention Patrick Horgan, who, one of the best hurlers in the country, probably, you know, didn't have his best game against Dublin. I actually think Owen O'Donnell done a great job on him in that game. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in this game. You know, who's going to mark Horgan? Porrick Marr, maybe he'll pick him up. You'd have to imagine. Um, and the tip forwards will have to get going in this game. They'll need to see a bit more from them, in my opinion. You know, even though they scored two goals in the Limerick game, I did think they were quite weak in attack. They didn't have enough fluency. They didn't have enough movement. And they weren't getting enough support play from the midfield behind them. And I think Noel McGrath 
We'll need a bigger performance from him if Tipperary are going to win this game. Cork on the other hand side, look, listen, they have a few defensive lapses in them. We've seen it from time to time in the Waterford game and even in the Dublin game as well. They do have a habit of switching off at times and that can potentially cost them further down the line. And I do look at this and I think if Tipperary can get in behind that Cork defensive line, there could be problems there. But at the same time, Mark Coleman, fantastic in that game, without doubt. Um, versus Dublin, you know, he done a really good job on Eamon Dillon. So it's going to be interesting to see how Cork deal with some of Tipperary's front men. You know, will Mark Holman do a job on Seamus Callan? It's going to be interesting to see. But I do think Tipperary will uh, get over the line in the end. Um, you know, it's interesting looking at the recent records between these two as well. So Cork beat Tip by two in the league earlier in the year. But Tip obviously beat Cork by seven in the championship last year. And I think Tipperary will overall just have a bit too much for Cork. Um, I do think it'll be close, you know, it'll probably only be a couple of points in it, but I just fancy Tipperary to win more ball higher up the field and to be really rejuvenated after that defeat to uh, Limerick. You know, I, I don't think Liam Sheedy's going to let this championship slide with, without winning a game, so I think Limerick... Or I think Tipperary will come true and win this game by four points. And then you're moving on to Clare and Wexford. And a game that's been touted as the Davy Fitz Derby. Because he comes up against Brian Lohan. Of course, his, uh, once his best friend, now his enemy. And of course, uh, Davy Fitz, who is a Clare man. Lining out, of course, in the dugout against his former county. Now with Wexford. And I'm going to be honest, I worry about Wexford a little bit. I really do. I feel like maybe... They've really, you know, hitting as far as they could. They've gone as far as they could in last year in making the All-Ireland semi-final. You know, do they have any more motivation and energy still left in the tank to really make another push for an All-Ireland? It's hard to know. And one thing that worries me about Wexford is they don't have a plan B. And look, listen, many people will say, well, that's just how they set up. And that's how they've been so success successful. You know, that's how they've gotten to... Uh, all Ireland semis, it's how they won a Leinster title, it's the way they play, the defensive style system with a sweeper, it's it's what gets them over the line and they rely quite a lot on the short game and the only problem is when that doesn't work, I do worry for them a little bit, I feel like they can be susceptible a bit more to counter attacks and to being turned over and I think we've seen that time and time again in the game versus Galway. So it's going to be tough for Wexford, but at the same time, you would expect Davy Fitz to really, you know, lay into this Wexford side. You know, you, everyone's seen what he said after the game, you know, criticizing the team. And you would expect Davy Fitz to really roil up his men. And kind of similar to the Liam Sheedy situation, I, I can't imagine how Wexford don't win this game. Um, I feel like if Wexford do lose this game, I think Davy Fitz will leave. I think he'll leave as Wexford manager. In all honesty, I don't. I couldn't see him sticking around after what will what will be a very disappointing season. Um, but look, listen, Clare will be a very tough team to beat. You know, I know they only kind of scraped over the game versus Leash, and they did look very poor in that game defensively. And I feel like they looked very leggy in that second half, the way they allowed Leash to come back into it, and that would be very worrying from a Clare point of view. I think one thing about this game is that Clare, they look very over-reliant on Tony Kelly at the moment. You know, he scored 13 in the game, uh, nine of them, I believe, from freeze, and it's going to be tough, you know. It's going to be tough in this game because, yes, they do have other good players. You know, Aaron Shanahar scored three in the match uh, versus Leash, but you need to see more from the likes of Shane O'Donnell, Ryan Taylor as well. They really need to get more on the mark for Clare. They need to get more from their forwards. They need to have more support because undoubtedly, you know, Davy Fitz is going into this game. He knows this Clare team inside and out, and he probably knows if they keep Tony Kelly quiet and they keep him out of the game, they've got a great chance of winning it. And that's why I think they may double up on Tony Kelly. They'll make it very difficult for him and look listen in previous years you know you had peter duggan and podge collins who could fill the void if tony kelly wasn't scoring but this year you don't you just don't quite have the other options there so i think wexford will win it and um, i don't think it's going to be that high scoring you know i think uh, there might not even be any goals in the game but i think wexford will come out of it just about could easily go to extra time but i think uh, wexford are going to win it by two points and then we move on to the Leinster Hurling Championship Final, Galway and Kilkenny. And yeah, this is going to be a very interesting game indeed because, 
look, listen, this is massive for both of these two counties, you know, to win a, a piece of silverware after what was a very disappointing Leinster Championship last year. And I'm looking at Kilkenny in particular, you know, they haven't won a Leinster title since 2016. And, you know, when you look through the history books of Kilkenny, you know, you look back to 2014, they ended, I believe, was it a four-year wait or a three-year wait without winning a Leinster title. And that propelled them to All-Ireland success. You know, they won the All-Ireland in 2014, won it again in 2015. And winning the Leinster title for me for Kilkenny would be massive in putting them on the right track towards a potential uh, All-Ireland. And not only winning this game for winning a Leinster title, but also the fact that they'd probably avoid Limerick in a semi-final and possibly even avoid Galway again in a semi-final or something to that effect you know I think winning this is a much easier route to an All-Ireland final than it would be losing this I mean well obviously because you get through to a semi-final but I think losing this is going to be tough because they'd probably play Tipperary in a quarter-final and then maybe Limerick in a semi-final so it's going to be tough for Kilkenny um, it's going to be interesting to see how they get on you know TJ Reid is obviously their talisman you know he scored 110 in the game versus Dublin and they have seen a bit more from some of their other players like Owen Cody, Billy Ryan look quite bright in that game. Colin Fenley scored a really good goal against the Dubs as well. Um, the only kind of problem with Kilkenny is that they do have a couple of defensive lapses late on. You know, we seen them in the game versus Dublin. They had a massive lead and they almost managed to throw it away completely. You know, Dublin got back in the game and they struggled. They really struggled. The likes of Paddy Deegan and Killian Buckley couldn't get a hold of the likes of Eamon Dillon, um, who was really having a field day when he came on for Dublin in that game against Kilkenny. So it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with the likes of Joe Canning and Connor Whelan, because you know it's one thing you know struggling with the likes of Eamon Dillon, but Galway's full forward line and half forward line is a completely different proposition, in my opinion, to Dublin. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they deal with that. And in particular, Kilkenny, in my opinion, down the years, you even look at the Limerick game in the semi-final last year and the All-Ireland final against Tipperary, they tend to fade quite late on. And that is a little bit worrying for Kilkenny because I could see Galway really picking up momentum and picking up the pace late in the second half to potentially win this. So, yeah, look, listen, you're looking at Finton Burke, very bright in defence for Galway. You know, will he pick up TJ Reid? Um, he probably will and, you know, he'll, he'll probably mark him. Um, you know, you're looking at Joe Canning probably going up against Killian Buckley. That'll be a very good matchup. Uh, Porrick Mannion at wing back. You've got Cahill Mannion in midfield as well. You know, both of them scored two points in the win versus Wexford. So, yeah, I think Galway will win it, in my opinion. Um, I think they'll win this game. I think them and Limerick are very much on track to a potential All-Ireland final at the moment. So, I think Galway will have too much for Kilkenny and they'll win out by three points. And then we have Limerick and Waterford in the Munster hurling final. And look, listen, I think first of all, you have to give massive credit to Waterford for getting to the final. You know, it's their first their first championship win since 2017 was that win over Cork. Quite mad that actually their first win in three years lands them into a Munster final. But I suppose that is 2020 and that is the year that it has been and look listen obviously Waterford with a new manager a new system and um, they're really trying to right the wrongs of previous years you know they always had a very talented team they just seem to be a real problems behind the scenes maybe with Waterford last year and you know you combine that with the fact that Munster hurling at the moment is as competitive as it's ever been in all honesty when you look at the rise of Limerick and uh, Tipperary coming back on the scene last year as well so Look, listen, Stephen Bennett, you know, he was their best player in the league. He was their top player as well in the game versus Cork. Um, Callum Lyons as well, bright as ever, you know, scored a goal in that game. Very well taken goal as well. I think Desi Hutchinson has been a great addition to the team. Um, I believe he played soccer with Brighton, I believe it was. So he's come back and he's done a great job. You know, he looked very good for, uh, was a Bally Gunner as well in the in the Munster or in the, you know, the Club Hurling Championship down in Waterford. So great addition to the team. Um, coming in and Austin Gleeson you know former all-star what a player he is you know scored three in the game versus Cork and probably could have even played even better by his standards as well so it's going to be interesting to see how Limerick combat a lot of Waterford's attacking threat but I do think Limerick will win this game in all, in all honesty because it's just hard to see past them you know it's hard to see past Limerick at the moment I mean you're looking at the intensity and the work rate that they play with you know, they really work as hard as anyone 
uh, to win their games and the amount of gr ground they cover on the pitch is quite incredible. Geroid Hegarty for me in the game versus, uh, versus Tipperary was outstanding. Uh, Aaron Galan hitting 2-6. They just have so many attacking options. You know, you've got Tom Morrissey, Graeme Mulcahy, Peter Casey. You've Keen Lynch who can drift into the half-forward line. Kyle Hayes now playing at wing-back. That's not to mention, you know, Seamus Flanagan and Pat Ryan coming off the bench. Seamus Flanagan scoring 1-1 in the game, you know, uh, coming off the bench. So, they just have so many options now, Limerick. And, you know, they did look a little flat last year, in my opinion. And although they did get beat by Kilkenny and there was controversy over that late 65 that wasn't given, um, they did look a bit flat in that game. And maybe in general last year, they looked a little flat. They've had some new additions to this team. Will O'Donoghue who's come into the midfield and looked very bright. He's been a great addition to the team. And look, listen, when you look at the last two meetings between uh, Limerick and Waterford in the championship. So Limerick beat Waterford by 20 points in 2019 and 13 the year before. And they also beat them by four in the league earlier in the year. So it's very hard to see how Waterford stop Limerick in this game. I don't think the margin will be as big as what it was last year and also in 2018. But I do think Limerick will win this game quite comfortably. And I'm gonna say Limerick run out seven point winners. Anyway, lads, that's going to be the end of the video. Do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for a number of match reactions and fan reactions from the weekend. I'll be interviewing a number of fans after the game to give their thoughts and opinion on uh, this weekend's hurling and football action. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, have a great weekend. My name is Aaron, and I'll talk to you soon.